morning, everybody. Great to see everybody here today. As always, do please take a copy of the bulletin home with you. Lots of good information in there and a number of inserts. So again, please do take a copy home. Just to hit some highlights, and there are a lot of announcements today. Uh, one, uh, a reminder again that uh, last weekend was our annual Catholic Services Appeal Commitment Sunday. If you weren't here last Sunday or forgot your envelope last Sunday, we do have extra envelopes available in the pews as well as pens and pencils to fill them out. So if you haven't yet made your pledge, we please ask you to do so and uh, commit to the annual diocesan appeal. A reminder again, every dollar above our diocesan goal stays right here at St. Boniface to help uh, with our CSA project, which this year is the needed repairs to the bell tower. Reminder of our confession schedule for the Lenten season. Of course, we continue to have confessions every Saturday before the Saturday evening Mass, as we always do. But we have also expanded our confession schedule to include confessions after each of the Masses on Sunday. So immediately following Mass today, I will be available in the confessional for anyone who would like to celebrate that sacrament here today and will be so throughout the Lenten season. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. <clears throat> We are also participating together with many other parishes in our area, uh, once again in the The Light is On For You initiative. Uh, that is this Wednesday, March 11th. Confessions will be available here as well as uh, many other local parishes from 5 to 7 p.m. So that's just another opportunity to celebrate the sacrament. We will be participating again in the area communal penance service, which will be on Palm Sunday. It will be at 3 o'clock at St. Luke's. And of course, I'm always available by private appointment. So many opportunities to celebrate the sacrament and just strongly encourage you to do so during this penitential season. A correction on the calendar for Coffee and Donuts Sunday. Uh, in the bulletin, it says that it is next Sunday. It will, in fact, be the following Sunday, which is March 21st and 22nd. So I know you're very sad that there's no Coffee and Donuts today. But it will be next Sunday, so uh, plan on coming next Sunday and staying for coffee and donuts next Sunday and helping to support our parish food pantry. Just a note on the bulletin board, uh, please do not take it on yourself to post things on the bulletin board. Uh, recently the bulletin board became so cluttered with people just sticking flyers up there you couldn't read any of the flyers because they were all covering each other's flyers. Uh, and also, we just need some form of regulation to make sure that what gets posted on the bulletin board is consistent with our parish's mission. So if you would like to post something on the bulletin board, please drop it off in the parish office. Melanie and I will take a look at it, and if there is room and space on the bulletin board, we'll put it up there. Uh, again, as long as it's consistent with the mission of our parish. So again, please uh, do not take it on yourself just to post things on the bulletin board. Please drop them off in the office, and if we can, we'll post it for, for you. Just a note again on the calendar, of course, next weekend is our annual St. Patrick's Day party and raffle. You can see a table with some of the raffle items available in the gathering space. Please stop by the table on the way out today. And again, the raffle itself is next Saturday following the 5 o'clock Mass. Regarding our Easter flower donations, if you would like to make a memorial donation uh, in support of, um, in memory of someone, in support also of our flowers for Easter, uh, the envelopes are available in the gathering space. We are also, once again, selling the lilies. If you'd like to purchase a lily that is on the altar Easter weekend and then you can take home after Easter Mass, please feel free to do that. I'm not quite sure if there's order forms for that available yet, but I'm sure they'll be available soon if not. Knights of Columbus have several items in the bulletin today. Uh, one of them is advertising their annual communion breakfast that is Sunday, March 29th, following this 7.30 Mass. So there is an advertisement about that and a form to fill out to reserve your seats. Um, the speaker this year is Joe Tarquinio, who is the administrator of the Maria House Project. Uh, if you're familiar with that, it's like a halfway house for folks transitioning out of prison. It's faith-based. It's very strongly Catholic. It's an opportunity for these men coming out of prison to start their lives again. And Joe is the manager of that house, so should be a very enlightening and inspiring talk from Joe. I've heard him speak before. He's a very good speaker. So just consider attending the communion breakfast. 
And also there's an order form in there for the Bonnie Buns. They, uh, again, you can pre-order your Bonnie Buns. We are asking people to do that so they have a better idea of how many to make. Just a note for anyone who normally attends the 1030 Mass, if you do intend to purchase Bonnie Buns, they will be available only by pre-order at the 1030 Mass because usually by the 1030 Mass, all of the extras that they've made are gone. So again, if you are interested and you normally attend the 1030 Mass, they are available by pre-order only. And of course, the Knights are doing their um, food drive, which we've, they've done in the past, the 1,000-pound food drive. We thank everyone who's brought food in already. If you haven't yet, you can drop it in the boxes in the back of the church, and the Knights really appreciate that. Again, their goal to collect 1,000 pounds of food to give to our food pantry. Finally, uh, Bishop Persico, in light of the developing situation with the COVID-19 virus and the cold and flu season and so forth, has made some additional prohibitions at Mass throughout the diocese. Uh, there's an insert in the bulletin detailing them. He has sent a letter and asked all the pastors of the, Erie, of the Diocese of Erie to read this letter for all of our parishioners. So being the dutiful and loyal servant that I am, I am reading the letter now that Bishop Persico has commanded us to read. I write to you in the midst of a heightened awareness of the dangers not only of the flu but also of the coronavirus. As your shepherd, I want to be present to you in your concerns. The situation calls for responsible measures on our part, both to put people at ease in their worship and to help to prevent the spread of these diseases. For this reason, I have issued the following directives for all masses in the Diocese of Erie, which are effective immediately. The exchange of the sign of peace among the faithful is to be omitted. At communion time, the distribution of the body of Christ will continue as usual. I am encouraging you to receive the sacred host in your hand, but please know that, you, that your right to receive on the tongue remains in place. I am suspending the distribution of the precious blood to everyone other than the priest and deacon. A few reminders may also be helpful. Please remember that if you are not feeling well, you are dispensed from the obligation to participate in Mass and should stay home until you are well. Also, you should not feel obligated to shake anyone's hand on the way in or out of church, nor should you feel obligated to use the holy water fonts if you prefer not to. Your pastor himself may decide to refrain from shaking hands. I have not. We will respect the choices that you make to protect your health. During these times, we need to rely not only on common sense, but also on prayer. Prayer for the sick, prayer for researchers, prayer for health workers. Be assured of my own prayers for you as well. May the Lord bless you and keep you and your loved ones safe. Bishop Persico. Now, you're all very familiar with my own opinion of this whole coronavirus hysteria. I will continue to shake hands with anyone who will shake mine. If you don't want to shake my hand, that's fine. I won't hold it against you. Uh, but we do need to observe the prohibitions that Bishop Persico has placed on us, which, again, the addition here is the we will not be distributing communion in the cup. So practically speaking, that means for Eucharistic ministers, the schedule that we sent out has three Eucharistic ministers scheduled for each Mass. We now only need one. So just for practical purposes, until we get through the current schedule, if you are the first Eucharistic minister listed under Eucharistic ministers, you will be the Eucharistic minister for that Mass. Uh, we are asking the other ministers that you will not be ministers at that Mass. So, again, just looking at the schedule, if you're the first one listed, you will be the Eucharistic minister for that Mass. The other two ministers will not be needed as ministers at that Mass. Of course, we still want all of the ministers to come to Mass, uh, but you will not need to be Eucharistic ministers if you are the latter two. So thank you for that.
Please stand and join in our entrance antiphon. We will recite the first antiphon found on page 82 in the Breaking Bread. Again, the first antiphon on page 82 in the Breaking Bread. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, and in my words, and what I've done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolks and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessings in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Mercy be on us. Our pride is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put it our hope in you. Lord, mercy be on us. Our hope in you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design. And the grace bestowed on us is in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest. Through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. And from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Like the sound of a horn calling basketball players to the court, March Madness has sounded its horn. While most of us probably think that the madness of that moniker refers to the insane number of college basketball games that will be played over the next few weeks, I have a different theory. I think it refers to how mad everyone gets about the NCAA tournament selection process. The announcement of the bracket hasn't even taken place yet and people are already crossing swords over which team should be in and which team should be out. While the selection committee does have a body of criteria that they theoretically use to determine that decision, it ultimately comes down to flawed, subjective human judgment, leaving pretty much everyone in a fighting mood. What the selection process needs is a unifying principle a way of pulling it all together into a unified whole. One basic truth that makes it perfectly clear who should be in and who should be out, and put an end to the madness once and for all. This isn't just true of the NCAA tournament. In the grand scheme of things, basketball is just a game. Yet the divisions and anger that erupt this time of year every year for such a trivial thing as basketball, reveal much deeper divisions and anger that plague our world year-round about matters much more serious and consequential. Whether we're talking about politics or religion, cultural issues or economic issues, education or entertainment, the list of topics that you can't discuss in polite company without starting a heated argument has grown to about 10 pages these days. It seems every other day different crowds of people are taking to the streets an angry protest about one thing or another. We need a way to cut through all the shouting, to find again what unites us, or what should. We need to find a unifying principle. Lent gives us exactly that. 
Our Lenten fasting gives us the opportunity to put the distractions and divisions among us aside and to focus again on what really matters, and more importantly, on who really matters, our loving God and Father. Our Lenten prayer opens our closed minds and hearts to see that he is the thread that runs through everything and pulls everything together. He is the creator of all, revealed improbably in the order of nature. He orders and gives purpose to our lives as human beings, in planting his moral law in our hearts and expounding upon it through the laws of faith revealed first in Moses and later through the prophets like Elijah. He even saves us from ourselves when we reject his law and he recreates us in his own divine image by taking flesh and fully revealing his love for us and his son, Jesus Christ. Finally, our Lenten works of charity give us the opportunity to put God's love into action, drawing all people into communion with God and one another through our works of selfless service. Through all these ways and more, Lent reconnects us to that one basic truth that ties us all together, God's amazing love for us. Take advantage of this Lenten season to reflect on that truth and to reconnect to it yourselves. Then go out into this noisy, divided world and put an end to the madness by sharing that one unifying truth with others. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, where the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers together, we offer them to our Heavenly Father, who we know hears us and answers us. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may be transfigured more and more into the image and likeness of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to listen, that we may hear the voice of Christ in prayer, in events, and in relationships, so that we may respond more fully to God's invitation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For courage that we, like Abraham, may go forth from all that is familiar to new places in which God leads us, so that we may be a blessing to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the candidates for full communion with the church, that God will lead them to a deeper awareness of a new life within them and help them to be renewed by their Lenten observance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For openness of heart, that as we prepare to celebrate the sacrament of penance, we may discover God's unbounded love that desires to forgive and free us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all the descendants of Abraham, for Jews, Muslims, and Christians, that we honor all that we share in common and work to overcome the evil that ensnares human hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students who are on spring break, that God will keep them safe in their travels, inspire them to make wide decisions, and help them be renewed, be renewed in body, mind, and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> For all who are working to combat the spread of disease, that God will inspire them with new ways to eradicate disease. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that God will welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven. And for the living and deceased members of St. Boniface, for whom this Mass is offered today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, giver of all gifts, we thank you in a special way for the gift of this Lenten season. We ask you to help us take advantage of this time to grow closer to you and one another through our works of prayer, penance, and charity, all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy I should enter into your life, but on this end of the world, my soul shall be healed. body of Christ.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, a reminder, I will be hearing confessions after Mass today. Once I'm finished greeting people at the door, uh, I will come into the confessional for confessions. If you would like to celebrate that sacrament, I invite you just to please stick around after Mass and uh, come on into the confessional once I get in there. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in peace.